All right. We've been talking about uh, uh, be not weary. He's coming. And this week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit on Bible doctrine today. So what I need you to do, you should have gotten a worship guy. Did everybody get a work? Who, who didn't get a worship guy today? Did everybody get Well, there's a few that didn't get them. Ushers, can you help me out? I want you to have that. I want you to write the scriptures down because what I'm going to give you is the fundamentals of what we believe in Christianity concerning the rapture, amen? Now, you know, some people say, I don't believe in the rapture or this or that. When something is Bible doctrine, you got to really watch when you say, I don't believe in this or that, amen? The ushers are going to bring them up, uh, bring them in a minute. Just raise your hand. They'll give you one or get a piece of paper out and uh, worship guides, Brandy. We just want to get worship guides to everyone that needs them. Ushers, come on down, amen? Don't we got great ushers? Come on, guys, give them a big hand. If you didn't get a worship guide, raise your hand. The pens are right in front of you. Write the scriptures down so that you can know in Christianity why we believe in the rapture, why this is a blessed hope of the church. So would you turn with me to Titus chapter 2, and we're going to begin with verse 11. I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures today, so get your Bible out. They're going to all be in the New King James. I, I didn't want them here and there. I want you to be able to write them down and see them for yourself. So if, you, if you're using a digital uh, means of looking at the Bible, just go to the New King James Version, and we'll hang out right there. You ready? Oh, that was the weakest. Are you ready? I don't know about you, I'm excited. You know, the next week is a feast of trumpets, amen? You never know, you never know. This might, this might be it in a couple days. We don't know. No man knows the day or hour, but we have a blessed hope, so we're always looking up, looking up, all right? Father, we thank you for your word today. I thank you that we're growing in your word, we're maturing in your word, and I thank you for the fundamental beliefs of the word, and today, our blessed hope, the rapture, Lord, what is it? Why do we believe it? So forth and so on. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Second Timothy, uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Everybody there? Everybody there? All right, talk to me today. It helps a lot, amen. For the grace of God that brings salvation. What brings salvation? The grace of God, uh, God's undeserved favor, has appeared to all men. And we know who he is that appeared to all men. His name is Jesus, all right. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we shouldn't live like this world, amen? We should live how? Soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for. Do you see the action of that word there? We are looking for this day. This isn't, oh, maybe it'll happen. What? I am anticipating the soon return of Jesus Christ to take us to glory that we could celebrate a seven-year feast, a marriage feast of the Lamb, and then come back down here and get this thing going the way God intended it to be from the very beginning. Amen. That's exciting to me. And I'm going to show you in the Word of God today that if you're excited about that, you're going to get something special when you get to heaven. I don't know about you, I always like when they say, you order this and you're going to get something special. And you wonder what it is. Well, I'm going to tell you at the end, there is something special waiting for those that look forward to the coming of the Lord. Ready? So we're looking for, read it with me, verse 13. Ready? Looking for, come on, all together, ready? Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearance of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people. We are a special people. Say that. I am a special people today. Oh, you guys, did you wake up today? All right, say that. I am a special people today. All right, well, what are we zealous for good works? When you do something like this Operation Christmas Child, things like that, those are good works, amen? People have made this statement, and here it is, and I'll put it out there. Hey, the word rapture is not in the Bible. It's not. But also the word trinity is not in the Bible. 
But how many here believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? So what is it about this word rapture? The word rapture is a Latin word. You will not find this word in the American Bible. You won't find it in an Italian Bible. You won't find it in a Spanish Bible. You won't find it in a Polish Bible. But you will find it in a Latin Bible. Are you guys with me? Do you understand what I mean by that? So let me show you where this word is taken from. Ready? Go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. Man, yesterday me and Diane said, let's go for a hike. So everybody keeps talking about this Highway to heaven. Anybody been there? What? Oh, yeah, the Led Zeppelin song. That's right. No. So we said, okay, we're going to give it a shot. How many, have, how many have taken that? Wow. That was a very interesting walk. If you've never done it, it's over in Vernon. It's a mile and a half, and it's, it's a stairway to heaven, but ain't no staircase, let me tell you. Man, oh man. But anyway, I got a little touch of heaven yesterday. It was that beautiful day yesterday and the view up there. It's worth the hike, but it's a hike. Mm. Amen. I'm watching people walking, little kids up. I said, oh, God bless you. Uh, let me pray over you. I said, <laughs> All right. Now here's the Apostle Paul talking, and it's interesting as I've been doing this teaching this month, you'll find the teaching of the return of the Lord just about in every New Testament book of the Bible. Because they all expected the Lord to return in their lifetime, and he didn't. And I believe there's reasons why, as I've been teaching the last three weeks, I believe it is, where I, where I brought out things are not the same today as they've always been. Israel had to get scattered. They got scattered in 70 AD. Israel had to come back as a nation. They came back as a nation in 1948. Jerusalem had to go back into the hands of Israel. That happened in 1967. All this that's going on, things are not like they used to be. All right, things are definitely, the knowledge has is, is just expanded beyond words, the speed uh, that this world is going through, on and on, all right? So now we're going to stay with the scripture for the rest of the time, ready? 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant or ill-informed or not informed, brethren. Who's he talking to? Us, the church, right? Concerning those that have fallen asleep, lest we sorrow as others who have no hope. What's he talking about here? People that have already died, all right? And back then there were people that were dying just like they're dying now. And Paul is giving a letter of encouragement to them that we don't sorrow like other people. Yes, we grieve. Yes, we're sad. But dear Lord, you know, if my friend said to me right now, you know what, Pastor, I'm going to Hawaii for a month at all expense, all-inclusive vacation. I wouldn't be crying for them. I'd be mad. I'd be jealous of them. You understand what I'm saying? They're up in heaven. They're being well taken care of. We are going to see them again soon. Amen? I am going to see my mom and dad again. I'm going to see my friends again. Amen? And you also. So hold on to that scripture, verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died, how many believe Jesus died? And that he rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Isn't it interesting? It doesn't even say dead. It says sleep. Amen? And some people want to whack this out and say, yeah, they're just sleeping in the ground. No, they're with the Lord because he says those who sleep in Jesus. Verse 15. For this we say by the word of the Lord. Remember last week I said there are times the Apostle Paul says this is the word of the Lord and there are times that he said this is my opinion, right? We see that when he teaches about marriage and things like that. Here he's saying this is the word of God. Here we go. That we, say us, who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed or be ahead of those who are asleep. For the Lord himself, oh, let's read this together, ready? For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive shall be 
caught up. There's your word rapture right there. Caught up. In the Greek, it's harpezo. H-A-R-P-A-Z-O. It's where we get the word rapture, and it means catch up, take by force, pluck, catch, pull, to seize, to carry off by force. I got a feeling the devil's going to try and fight that day. I got a feeling when that, the angel Gabriel's about to blow that trumpet, the devil's going to try and fight it. But Paul used that word, harpazo, right here. And he says, then we who are alive and remain shall be harpazo, caught up, taken by force, catched away, plucked, pulled together with them. We're going to meet our loved ones in the air to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we will always be with the Lord. And then he says, comfort one another with these words. Now, this is not the second coming of the Lord. At the second coming of the Lord, every eye will see him. But at the rapture, only the believers will see him. Amen. It's a special time for just us to go meet our Lord as he presents us to the Father and we celebrate for seven years up in heaven. Amen. So another question that comes out is this one. Has there ever been another rapture in the Bible? And the answer is, yes, there has. And let me show you a few of them so you get an idea that this isn't going to be some strange thing. It's going to be different that a big group of people, probably over a billion people, are going to go. And you remember I, I brought this out last week for those that weren't here. I made out the statement, how come the United States of, the, of America, the most powerful nation on planet Earth ever and to in this end day is not mentioned in the Bible. And I believe, personal, it's me speaking, not the Bible saying it, that when the rapture comes, so many people are going to be gone out of this nation that this nation is just going to get swallowed up by the European Union. Amen? Personal opinion, but it kind of lines up with what we're seeing in our world. So let's look at others that have been raptured in the Bible. Let's go to Genesis chapter 5 and verse 21. Have others, have there been other raptures or caught up or plucked or seized or, or what was some of the other definition? Carried off or to seize on or claim, oh, I like this one. Claim for oneself eagerly to snatch out or away. Now, again, this is what happens to many Christians. They keep making this statement. Yeah, but I'm not just, I'm just not good enough. And if the Lord were to come today, I'm a mess. Yeah, you are. And so am I. And so is every Christian and every person in this human body. And you're never going to get good enough. You're always going to mess up. Just take hold of his free grace. Amen. We try and do what we want to do in our lives. But the most important thing, in fact, I read it this morning during my devotional time. What is it, they asked Jesus, what is to do the works of God? And he said, the works of God is to believe in his son whom he hath sent. Amen. That's the works of God. You want to do the works of God, believe in Jesus Christ. All right, here we go. The first person to be taken in the rapture, Genesis 5, 21. Enoch lived 65 years, and he begot Methuselah. How about calling your kid Methuselah, amen? And after he begot Methuselah, remember he was 65 years old, Enoch walked with God. So after, when he was 65, he had this child, and all of a sudden he started getting into a very close relationship with God. He walked with God 300 years, so 365 years. Now people say, 365? Why, why did people live so long back then? Because they were so close to the point of life of the Garden of Eden, amen? And then God put the restriction of 120, 120 years after Noah's flood, all right? Everybody there, all right. So Enoch walked with God 300 years. He had sons and daughters, so all the days of Enoch was 365 days, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not for God, say with me, took him. God took him. One day he's walking there, next day he's gone. He got raptured. Amen? Interesting, his son, Methuselah, lived 969 years, the oldest person in the Bible, all right? But the interesting thing is the Bible says to us that are caught up in this first resurrection, the rapture raised from that point, we're going to live a thousand years on planet Earth. One thousand, so it'd be even longer than Methuselah. But Methuselah lived 969 years in a fallen Earth. I don't want that. 
No, I wouldn't want that at all. But to live a thousand years in a perfect earth, Amen. And then, you know, somebody is saying, well, what do you mean only at that level? We don't have time to get into it. But after a thousand years, God's going to set this whole thing up again. Amen. He says he's going to destroy the earth. He's going to destroy the heavens. And he's going to make everything new forever. Amen. But there is the initial 1,000 year period. Number two, turn to 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11. 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 11. And this talks about Elijah, Elijah. Then it happened as they continued on and talked, him and Elijah, that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses on them and separated Elijah and Elijah. And Elijah, ready, say it with me, went up by a whirlwind into heaven. So Elijah and Enoch. It's very interesting to me, and it's my opinion, but there are only two people in the word of God that never died, Enoch and Elijah. And if you look in the book of Revelations, two people are going to come to this earth, the two prophets, you remember that? Fire will be able to come out of their mouth, so forth and so on. And then they will die on planet earth and then they will rise right up. They'll have a, a rapture experience right on CNN and every other news thing, Amen. And isn't it interesting that only two have never died and these two come back and die? Why is that? I believe because it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Everyone must die on planet earth, but there will be one group of people that will die in what the Bible calls the twinkling of an eye. In other words, man, I like to be that group, amen? How many like to be that group? Another, another person that got raptured or caught up. Look over in Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Told you today was going to be Bible doctrine, amen? So if I'm going to give you Bible doctrine, I want to give you the proof of the doctrine, amen? I don't want people saying, oh, this is Bible doctrine, but they have no proof of it, amen? Well, an angel called Macaroni appeared to me. No, the word of God is what we stand upon, amen? All right, here we go. Our Lord Jesus. Now, when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was what? taken up and a, into a cloud, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly, can you picture? I think I, think I could still see him right there. Do you see him, John? Peter, I don't know. Yeah, come on, anybody ever do that with a balloon? Watch, watch. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also, who also said, men of Galilee, why are you looking up? This same Jesus, not another Jesus, not false prophet Jesus, this same Jesus who was taken up from you in the heaven, taken up, raptured, will so come in like manner as you saw him go up into heaven. The same Jesus is going to, Gabriel's going to, last week we talked about the Jewish wedding, right? The, the best man, the bridegroom is coming. The bridegroom is coming. And then our Lord will take us home. One more, Philip, over in Acts chapter 8, verse 39. It says, and now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. Now this was different. He wasn't caught up in the sky as we see Elijah, Enoch, and Jesus, but he was caught from one city and taken to another place, amen? But to just show you that this has happened in the Bible. So we see that there is scripture to prove a rapture. Everybody good with me? Or if you want to say, hapazo, amen, the, the catching away. The Bible, the rapture again is a biblical doctrine of the church and it is also our blessed hope. Let me show you what Jesus said about it. Would you turn with me to John chapter 14? John chapter 14. The Bible teaches us that, yeah, we should learn through topical teaching, but we should also learn line upon line, precept by precept, here a little, there a little. And that's what I'm doing today, just laying it down, amen? John chapter 14, our Lord and Savior Jesus talking, and he says this, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. 
The other day I was just goofing around on the internet and Zillow sent me a picture of a $29 million house in New Jersey, Saddle River, Saddle Brook, New Jersey, Saddle River. You had to see this house. That thing's going to look like a shack compared to what God's got in store for us up in heaven. Amen? Here we go. In my Father's house are, everybody say, many. Not 144,000, many. Literally billions on top of billions. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Revelation how big the city is. It's huge. And not only is it huge this way, it's huge this way too. It's just huge. So there's a house. Wait. No, no, I said that wrong. Strike that. There's a mansion waiting for you in heaven. Please invite me over. Amen. And we'll invite you over. All right. If it were not so, Jesus talking, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Now think about that. It took God six days to create all the earth, the heavens, the, the moon, the stars, and it's taken Jesus about 2,000 years to get our house ready. Yeah. It's going to be sweet. Our blessed hope. Here we go. And I go and prepare a place for you. And if I... And I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way you know, Thomas. Oh, I'm so glad my parents named me after him, right? Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, come on, say with me. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So the rapture again is Jesus talking to us, telling us I'm going to take you away. And he added some things with this that I want you to see this morning that really excite me. So go back over to 1 Thessalonians 4.15. Let me give you a few more scriptures. Hang with me for about 10-15 minutes and you'll have this doctrine put real good in your heart to understand why we believe in a rapture, why we believe in the second coming of the Lord, why we believe in heaven, why we believe in hell, why we believe in a lake of fire, why we believe in salvation through only one, Jesus Christ, on and on. This is the word of God. Amen. First Thessalonians 4.15, we just read it. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, so there will be one generation that will be here on planet earth when the Lord returns in this way. I kind of think it's our generation, but there's been many that believe the same thing and it was not, correct? Why is that? No man knows the day or hour. I said it last uh, two weeks ago when I said you can go on YouTube and you'll see all these people predicting it's going to be October this, it's going to be this, this. Liars, 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 because no man knows the day or hour. All right? All right, here we go. Uh, that, we, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will no mean precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then 17. Then we who are alive, so this one group of people in remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we will always be with the Lord. I wanted you to see verse 18. Therefore, comfort ye one another with these words. So these are supposed to be words of comfort. Hey, guys, earth is becoming a little bit like hell down here, if you know what I'm saying. I comfort you. The Lord's coming. The Lord is coming. Now watch. Paul brings it out in a different way over in 1 Corinthians 15. Would you turn over to 1 Corinthians 15? You guys getting something this morning? I want you to see this. This is Bible doctrine. Oh, that church don't preach doctrine. Well, you don't come to that church. If you came, you would find out that we do. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. <clears throat> Behold, I tell you a mystery. Look what Paul said. I'm going to tell you a secret. I'm going to tell you a secret. Here's the mystery. We shall not all sleep or we shall not all die. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Oh, guys, are you getting this? At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead, in, and the dead will rise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 
Now, he's going to tell you how we're going to be changed. But just for a moment, how fast is this rapture going to happen? Blink your eyes. That's how fast. That's why this world is going to be, be, be in total turmoil once, we're got, once this rapture hits. Picture pr- approximately 2 billion people taken out of this. Oh, you know, they're, they're going to say, yeah, we told you about Area 51. We told you about the UFO. See, they came. They, and, and they just happened to take all these wackos out of here. You can call me wacko. Call me whatever you want. But man, I'm going to be with Jesus. Amen. My wife is going to be with Jesus. Our children are going to be with Jesus. Our grandchildren are going to be with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Start saying it. Well, they're not serving the Lord. Well, start proclaiming it. Amen. Praying over them. For this corruptible, this earth-ruled body must put on incorruption. This mortal, death-ruled body must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen today? All right. Now, why a rapture? Why why does there need to be this separation? Let me show you from the Word of God. Because we who have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are, you can write this down, we are exempt from the wrath of God that will come upon the ungodly. We are exempt from it, guys. Exempt. Come on. Wouldn't it be nice to just be exempt from taxes? Imagine if you made $100, you kept $100. Well, you're going to be exempt. We are exempt from the wrath of God. And let me tell you, because some people have tried to make God into, oh, he's just mushy, mushy, lovey, lovey. God is a God of justice. God is a God of judgment. But he is also a God of mercy. He has made, the the Bible says it like this. The Lord is long-suffering, desiring that no man perish. But when a person rejects the Lord, then the wrath of God is upon that person. All right. We are living in what's called the dispensation of grace or the church age. This is a time where God is being merciful to the whole world. You know, people make statements, you know, if God spares this city, he, he owes Sodom and Gomorrah an apology. You're, you're missing it, guys. You're missing it. God is long-suffering right now. And guys, people that are deep in sin are being saved today. Amen. That's God's mercy. But when that clock, and we call it the clock, the church age, when that stops, that's when the rapture happens. Amen. You don't want to be here, but let's look at the scripture. Go over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 10. And again, you should read before and after. Jot the scripture down. You can read it later. But look what it says. To wait for his son from heaven. Here we go. The rapture, the second coming. When he, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath of Uh, wrath to come, wrath to come. What did Jesus do? He delivered me, he delivered you. I don't fear seeing God. Oh, there's probably some regrets and things like that. And that's why it says in Revelation, he will wipe every tear from our eyes, amen? But I don't fear seeing him because the judgment is not placed on me, it was placed on Jesus Christ. All right, we good with that? Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter five and verse nine. For God did not, say that with me, did not, come on, say it together. God did not, what? Appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just read Luke to you. Luke 21, 36, Jesus speaking, watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy 
to escape. You know, people say, oh, you people that believe in the rapture, you just want an escape, you know, an escape. Jesus said it's an escape. Ain't darn to it I want an escape. I want out of here, amen? Man, when all hell breaks loose on this earth, you don't want to be here. You think it's cockeyed now. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. So here he says that we may be counted what? Worthy. To what? Escape all these things that will come to pass and be able to stand before the Son of Man. It's all good news for us that have accepted Jesus. But this should make us evangelists. This should make us where we're greeting people and telling them, hey, man, don't you think this world is getting crazy? Things are changing. Have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? Hey, you don't even have to go that far. Just see what a person's trouble is and say, can I pray for you? Just little things. Drop little seeds with people. Amen. Now, people have made the statement again that, no, we're going to go through the tribulation. Well, I want you to go over to Revelation chapter 4. There's an interesting thing that happens in Revelation. In chapter 1, in chapter 2, in chapter 3, Jesus is talking to the church. To the church at Philadelphia, to the church at, at oh, wherever, all the seven churches there. To the churches, and he's speaking over and over to the church. When chapter 4 comes, he makes a statement, and you won't see a mention of the church Again, why is that? Because the church is not, when I say the church, you know I'm not talking about this physical bu building, right? This is all going to burn one day. I'm talking about us. We are the church, amen? We are the body of Jesus Christ. Because when God raptures the church out of here, Revelations chapter 4 all the way to Revelation chapter 19 you don't see the church anymore because we're not under the judgment of God. You need to understand that from chapter 4 on, what, till, till 19, what you're seeing is the judgment of the nations and what's also called Jacob or Israel's sorrow. The sorrow for rejecting the one who is to come. But he even says it in Romans, the grace of God, all, all Israel will be saved during this time. It's going to be an amazing. But let's look at chapter 4 and watch how since we're under the blood of the Lamb, his judgment passes over us. Watch. Revelations 4.1. After these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet, trumpet. It is so interesting to me that this president we have right now is called Trump. Yeah. It's just an interesting thing, right? Like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, watch, ready? Come on, come up here. King James, come up hither. Come up here, and I will now show you things which must take place after this. No church mentioned anymore. When do you see the church again? Revelation chapter 19, flip over. Revelation chapter 19, and verse 11. And watch how you see the church again. Isn't this amazing? When you just look at the word of God and go, wow, is this real? Yeah, it's real. Now watch. Now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. People say, are there animals up in heaven? Well, I can tell you there's horses up in heaven. All right, so even my dog, you going to be in heaven? Just don't let him poop on my lawn, okay? <laughs> Here we go. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on, on this horse was called Faithful and True. Who, who are we talking about here? Jesus. All right. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and his head were many crowns. He had a name written on him that no one knew except himself. Watch this. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Well, there it is. <laughs> you know, if you're doing a crossword puzzle, there it is. Who is called the Word of God? Jesus Christ. All right. Now watch verse 14. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on a white horse. Who's the armies in heaven? How are we clothed? White linen. 
the best suits, amen, and dresses. And we're riding on horses too. I'm not into horses down here. I think they're awesome looking animals and all, but you're not going to get me on one of them, amen? But up there, yes, sir. No doubt about it. Clothed in fine linen. Didn't just say linen, didn't say some, give you some cotton linen. Look, fine linen. How? White and clean. Why is our linen white and clean? Because we have been dipped in his blood, amen? Now, Paul looked forward to this day, and we also should look forward to this day. And as I said at the beginning, because there is a special reward for those that look forward to this day. Are you ready to see it now? We're going to open it up now, amen? You're going to scratch it off now and find out what this reward is. Ready? 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 6. Ready? Here we go. This is the Apostle Paul talking to this young man named Timothy who he mentored, who he discipled. Paul is about to be executed. He's going to have his head chopped off. I believe it was uh, by Emperor Nero. And now he's standing and he makes this statement. I am, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering in the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. Are you saying that, guys? Come on, fight the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Underline that, crown of righteousness. Because as you study the word of God, you'll see that there are different crowns for different things that we do down here. If I am faithful as a pastor, I will receive a special crown from the Lord. If you are a soul winner, you will receive a special crown from the Lord. If you have given of your time, talent, treasure unto the Lord, you will receive a special crown from the, from the Lord. We're going to stand before what's called the Bema Seat. It's not a seat of judgment. What'd you do wrong on you? What'd you do wrong on you? What'd you? No, it's going to be a seat of rewards. What we did for the Lord while in this, in this flesh. Now look, you are saved by grace, amen? And the Bible says that some will be saved as if by fire. In other words, their tail is on fire, but they made it in. And I would rather make it in fire than not make it in, amen? But why get in there with, with your tail on fire. Get in there and receive every crown that you can, that we can take these glorious crowns and present them to our king on that day. All right, so here's one of the crowns, and it's called a crown of righteousness. So we can say, rah, rah, Paul, you fought the good fight. You did it, and you got that crown. And that would be good enough, and we could end right there. But let's finish the scripture. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge will give to me on that day, read the next part with me, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearance. All those that are excited about the Lord's return. All those that are looking up saying, today might be that day. You never know when the Lord's going to come. All those that are saying, look, I'm not going to put all my apples in this, this bushel of this life. I am setting my affection on things above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. I am setting my hope in Jesus Christ. This life is going to pass away. That doesn't mean you don't save for the future. That doesn't mean you're not responsible. The most responsible Responsible Christians are those that have their eyes on eternity but have their hands to the plow, fight, doing it every day. Those that are saying, my neighbor's not saved. Lord, show me, lead someone to them, use me. Those that are saying, I want to be part of the family. I want to be part of the kim kingdom. I want to take my responsibility seriously. And then we could say with our other brothers and sisters, Maranatha, you remember the old timers here? Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come. Amen and amen. I laid it for you as clear as I can. Church, there's a day the rapture is going to happen. Maybe it'll happen at the Feast of Trumpets. I don't know. Maybe it'll happen in the Spring Feast, the Fall Feast. We don't know, but it's going to happen. And I want to be one of those that are looking up that are ready, that are busy, that on that day, like the Apostle Paul, I might receive that crown of righteousness 
who the Lord himself will give to all those who love his coming, love his appearance. Amen? That's a lot of crowns. That's right. But you know what? When the streets are made out of gold, I think there's plenty of gold up there to make a whole bunch of crowns. Amen? Did you get something today, guys? All right. It's, it's our blessed hope. Don't let it go. It's our blessed hope. It's what we believe in. Let's close in prayer today. Again, I encourage you, if you need healing or you know someone that needs healing, go ahead and grab this book, Eat Your Way to Life and Health. Father, we love you today. And we thank you again that Jesus, he is Lord. Thank you that he is the resurrection and the life. Thank you that what you have begun in us, you will bring to total completion. I thank you, Father, for the joy of our salvation. And I thank you that you're not done with us yet, Lord. And Lord, in the midst of all the darkness that we see, there is such a bright light in front of us, Lord. Lord, it's like when me and Diane were just sitting outside on the deck the other day. And as it got darker, the stars got brighter, Lord. And it's the same with you. As times get darker, our love and our faith in you becomes brighter. For those that are here today that maybe you've never made that decision to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today I want to encourage you. If you don't think this world is different than it's always been, Man, you're missing something. Things are happening fast. Jesus is coming back. And he doesn't want to judge you. He wants you to be judged through him. If you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart, to be your Lord, to be your Savior, then pray this simple prayer with me. We'll all pray it together to help you, to make it easy for you. But pray it from your heart. Pray it because you mean it. Say this with me. My dear God in heaven, I believe today that Jesus Christ, he is the son of God. I believe that he died on the cross and that he rose on the third day. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my savior. Thank you today for forgiving me of all my sins and accepting me today into your kingdom. I repent. I'm forgiven, and I am born again in Jesus' name. Amen.